Good morning. Welcome to the FTS bet slip on Wednesday, the 10th of February. We had a slight date and day malfunction yesterday. I'm busy. I've got a massive amount on this week. Um, Excel wise, I'm just doing some bits for the well for this season and getting ready for forward. But um, also, one of my uh, databases. This is why I never let anybody else touch it. See, I've, I, I'm, I, people say I'm a bit of a control freak. Um, and one of my big things is whenever I let people touch things, they mess it up. I let somebody touch one of the databases, they've completely and utterly messed it up. Um, I don't even know how they've done it or how they do it, but it's completely naffed and I've got to fix it all. And that is now going to be probably a two day job. Um, I've enlisted some help, but um, even when they've done their bit, I've got to get it all into the master and it's going to take... Um, probably all of tomorrow to do that to get it ready for the weekend again don't let people touch your stuff because they're useless um i forgot about this the uh, i had a couple of things the um firstly the mike dean thing i think i mean you know i've banged on about it society pulled the plug out any decency going down the plug hole uh, a football referee getting death threats just say those words to yourself and and where are we going? What on earth is going on? It's a game of football. Um, where they came from, I don't know, sounds like carpet fans, unhappy with Suchik. Um, yet yeah, they've been turned up, turned over that and um, the uh, Southampton one. I bang on about how incompetent the officials are. I've always banged on about it before. VAR, I've been going football for years. They can't get basics right. You know, you sit there watching it. I sit, um, used to sit in the old ground, 15 yards from the touchline maximum, and you'd see a ball go up for a throw-in and they didn't have a clue. You've got the ref doing his little finger signals to the linesman. It just, I've always said it, that I just think they're poor. Uh, I think VAR is obviously highlighting these the poorness of them. I mean, it is staggering how they look at the screens and get these decisions um, wrong. Again, it's subjective, but you know, almost seems like they want to double down on what their first decision was. But to um, to get death threats, really, and your family. I mean, what? It's just disgusting, isn't it? The world is just becoming a disgusting place, and nobody wants to look at themselves and say, "Hang on a minute, what is going on here?" Um, you know, even all this like, and I'm not going to bang on about this business in America. People died there. People got killed. Policemen went to work that day and died. It's just staggering. It's just absolutely staggering what we're living in. Um, so yeah, really disappointing to see that. I think a man having to exclude himself because it's him and his family getting death threats over a game of football. It's just, it's vile. It's just disgusting. Um, you know, and, and you know the racism thing. I know it's big in the press. You see some of the stuff these players get sent. Ian Wright, Rashford. Um, it's got, it's got to start doing something about it. It's just disgusting. It's just horrific. So there was that. I forgot to comment on it, and that's dummy bit there. Um, but then I didn't watch this because I make a point of not watching their games, um, and I, I don't watch him. But so this is third party, so I may not have it right. But did Klopp actually say? that the reason they lost or that Allison had a bad game was apparently passing the ball to City players um, was because he had cold feet. I mean, is that is that for real? Is that, is that where we're taking the game now in the level of excuses? The keeper misplaced a pass or whatever it was he did. I didn't see it. I haven't seen the goals uh, because he had cold feet. I mean, they say that Manage football management's a high pressure job. It isn't, is it? Let's be honest, it isn't. Being a nurse in this sort of situation at the minute, that's a high pressure job. Being a football manager, they get paid multi millions. It's a merry go round. If Klopp got sacked tomorrow, he'd get another job at a top club. Look at where Allardyce has been, Hodgson, Dave Bassett in the old days. They just go round and round picking up millions, get sacked, get their contract paid, get another one, get sacked. You know, even Mourinho, you know, his time at top clubs are probably coming to an end. But he's been Chelsea, Inter, Real Madrid, Chelsea again, Man United, Tottenham, gets a sack from Tottenham, 
he may not get another top job, but he'll get like a Benfica, he'll get the national team. You know, it's not high pressure. There's no pressure in that, is there? When you know you can just walk out of one and into another one and you've got millions in the bank anyway. Where's the pressure? Absolutely ridiculous. Of course you want to win on the day, but there's no pressure. Uh, look at Ancelotti. He's done all the rounds, and he? He's been AC Milan, Champions League, Chelsea, Real Madrid. He's now at that little other tin pot club up north that's going out the cup tonight. Um, but he's probably still picking up a nice, you know, large six, seven figure salary, rather, large seven figure salary. Um, even at a little tin pot outfit. It's not pressure, is it? To stand there and start saying the keeper had cold feet and then people saying they're under pressure, these managers. Do me a favour. Do me a favour. It's just pathetic excuse making. Just say your team's not playing very well. Why don't they just be honest? That's what annoys me. The, the, the only one who I really think was 100% honest every time he came out. Um, I mean, Potch wasn't bad, but he used to waffle on about philosophy and that. But obviously I watch more Spurs than anything else. But Martin Yole was always... Martin Yole was somebody I always respected him in a in a post-match interview because he just said it as it was and I always liked that I thought he's just come out and said we didn't play very well or, or we played well today I just I really liked him I thought he was a lovely gentleman um, of the game but um, old Clippity Klopp coming out with cold feet do me a favour do me a favour sod off somebody told me genuinely I, you know I'm a big I like Dortmund sort of been there a few times big Dortmund fan like watching them play football Somebody told me when he was there, um, so I'm going back pre-Liverpool days, because I used to see the Champions League when they got the Champions League final. I used to see the highlights and, and that's all we'd see and think he was a bit entertaining. And somebody told me uh, then, um, it might have been the first time I went to Dortmund um, or even before that, that he's an arsehole. They said the Klopp's an arsehole. And I said, oh, we seem to. And they said, that's the trouble because you don't see him week in, week out. You only see the clips on Sky of the good bits when he has been slightly amusing. But week in, week out, he's an arsehole. And I have to say, I wholeheartedly agree. Clipperty is a knobhead. Knobhead Clipperty and he uh, cold feet do me a favour. Unbelievable. Um, right, that's that. Got those two out of the way. Done and dusted. Right, I'm going to talk to you about, I'm going to talk to you about pork belly. After there, just because I had it the other day and it is a fantastic roast, so I'm going to talk to you how to cook a really good bit of pork belly. Suggest you try this, it's absolutely lovely. Um, so, the first thing to do is to get um, get a slab of pork belly, order it from a butcher, ask them to leave the bones on the bottom. Um, you, in effect, get a little sort of rack of ribs at the bottom, but that helps keep it moist. First thing to do when you've got that is to um, wash it in hot water get boil the kettle and then pour it over the skin and give it a, a wipe over with some kitchen towel you can do it with any pork if you want to get good crackling wash it with boiling water first just wash it first put it on the side to dry pat it dry with some um, kitchen towel salt it really well and just leave it to get up to room temperature before when now when you come ready to cook it once again, wipe it off the top, wipe any moisture that the salt's drawn out, wipe it, you wanna get that skin as dry as you can, wipe that, then get a knife, and on pork belly in particular, you wanna score it, but you wanna score it no more uh, than half a centimeter apart, so lots of thin scores, go right through the rind, into the skin, uh, through to the fat, but in a, get a nice sharp knife, so you're making lots of scores right the length way along, but you want long thin ones on the pork belly are literally only half a centimetre wide maximum. So you, if you've got a decent sized bit of pork belly, you might make 25, 30 scores right across it. Salt again, cover it in salt, rub it in. Don't need oil, cover it in salt, rub it in. On your roasting pan now, you want to put uh, some celery, some onions, some lemongrass, a big lump of parsley and a big lump of coriander. So you want to create a sort of three quarter inch to an inch bed on the bottom of the roasting pan um, and then put the pork belly on top of that. Salt and, salt and um, pepper the underside as well, the meat side. Then put it on the roasting pan, meat side down on, on this bed. Uh, it's a good idea if you cook any roast to have a bed of some sort of vegetables to sit on. Like Even if I cook beef and things, I'll put it on onions and carrots because uh, it lets the meat circulate around underneath it, the air, the hot air, rather than the meat sit on the tight on the bottom of the tray. Uh, keeps it a lot more moist. 
um, than the, the sort of burning sensation of the metal through the meat. So get your bed, put your pork belly on there in the oven and you can cook this for as long as you like because if you've got the, the, the bed of vegetables in there help keep it moist, you've got uh, the fat running through the meat which um, it doesn't dry out as much as say a loin of pork. So put it on for about 160 for a good two, three hours. Try not to touch the oven. Obviously you might have to put potatoes or things in later but just do that quickly. But try not to touch the oven and you will get a beautiful piece of succulent pork belly those thin scores will crackle up beautifully and then when you take it out let it rest for five ten minutes and then you can just cut down the score marks you make so you've got already some ready made in effect slice marks to get some lovely slices of pork belly um, it's beautiful served with all sorts of things i can i sometimes serve it in sort of lettuce wraps with a with a sort of soy sauce um, dip and some coleslaw you can serve it with a traditional roast which is what we did on Saturday you can serve it on, on Sunday rather you can serve it with cauliflower cheese um, and, and little baby roast potatoes or even a baked potato it's absolutely it's so versatile absolutely gorgeous but you'll have a nice moist crispy uh, bit of pork belly beautiful there you go don't give you don't get many betting sites giving this stuff away um, right, and finally, I'm going to give you some heat maps. Now, these, this heat map, these ones I've run only from January last year, so um, about 10,000 games they are running through from January last year to the current period, uh, obviously covering the COVID period to look at. And um, as we've said before, with certain leagues, we're highlighting that there's um, certain ga certain leagues that a lack of goals at the minute that you might want to try and attack. Uh, so this is laying over three and a half goals, laying over three and a half goals, just some good leagues at the minute that are churning out some decent stuff. Uh, Turkish Super League, again, some of these you might have to lay up to four or five. It's up to you, again, at your own peril, whether you get involved with these or just follow it or try and find some other angles. If you're laying over three and a half, perhaps look at the two and a half market, see what that's like. Um across the board uh, laying laying every league on FDD between 4.1 and 4.2 since January last year so we're over three and a half is between 4.1 and 4.2 um, has produced 63 points profit just blind laying any league those two price points just Lane 4.1, 4.2. Uh, I think even if you go four, yeah, four. You can go four up to 4.2. Obviously, a few more games. Four up to 4.2, just over 60 points profit. Any league. Uh, if you look at individual leagues, Turkey laying over three and a half from three up to 3.3 uh, has produced 50 points profit over the last 18 months. Uh, the championship, obviously, we know there's some um, been low scoring in that league. Again, championship, 3.3 up to 3.6, 30 points profit. Um, if you take it up to 3.9, uh, is it 3.9? Sorry, oh, I'm just doing it on my sheet. Uh, take it up to 4, it's about 30 points profit. Uh, the Bundesliga, um, is it Bundesliga? Bundesliga 1 uh, yeah Bundesliga 1 uh, 2.5 up to 3 about 20 points profit um, over the last 18 months so just certain pockets at the minute obviously if you go higher like in the championship uh, is it the championship if you want to go higher you know there's if you want to lay anything between 5 and 6 there's 30 points profit um, they're all being very consistent. Obviously, we are in strange times. As I say, lots of football being played. Um, goal metrics down everywhere. Uh, Portugal was the other one. I think it was Portugal. Yeah, Portugal, uh, anything from 4.5 up to 5.5, uh, about 50 points profit. So laying over three and a half goals in those areas um, is proving very profitable. Again, it's stuff you can trade. It's stuff you can look at. You know, if if the, it's very likely that if the three and a half isn't making money, there may be a chance to make money in the two and a half. So those of you with FDD, you've got obviously both markets on your three and a half sheet. Um, 
and it's sort of it's one of these instances where you're you're trying to adapt to conditions and looking to make hay while the sun shines. Um, I'm I'm fully expecting that come August it may be back, but all I've done is run the heat maps over the full period, and then run the heat maps over the last eighteen months, um, or since January last year. It's not eighteen months, is it? Sorry, you know, thirteen months. Um, from January the 1st 2020 up and you just start to spot the differences between the two um, of actually oh hang on a minute this looks um, a bit unusual compared to a five year run so there you go do with, do with those what you will go and make your pork belly have a bet on over three and a half goals or laying over three and a half goals and it's paid for job done um, that's it for today it is uh, Wednesday the 10th of Feb I've got the day right It is the morning and I will be back with you all um, tomorrow afternoon.